Hey, you've got to admit that I've held off from posting anything Battlefield for a really long time now, so that at least deserves a pat on the back. Mission accomplished. Good work. What's going on, everybody? My name is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I have been in full-on Battlefield stealth mode for months now, just watching and waiting. And at this point, the franchise... You know what? Scratch that. The last few Battlefield games, along with DICE's seeming inability or willingness to do more than necessary, has the community literally turning on itself, which I can't ever remember seeing. Now, maybe I miss those spats of the past, but in general, this community has always been super engaged and for the most part, supports each other. We're going to cover all of the latest updates, the back and forths, and general info when it comes to the franchise. But before we begin, in case you aren't yet a sub, please smash that big, beautiful subscribe button and make sure to ring the bell to receive all my latest upload alerts. Let's dive right into this one. First topic for today is Season 1, and yeah, I know that it released almost two months ago, but we really need to quickly discuss this. And as a hardcore Battlefield gamer since the prehistoric ages, I've seen what DICE could do with its game-producing superpowers back in the golden age of Battlefield, which started with Battlefield Bad Company 2 and ended up at BF4 or BF1, but you know, basically in that time frame. In a couple of weeks time, Battlefield 2042 will have been on the market for nine months. And during that time period, it has received one content release. Season one, known as Zero Hour. Now notice I did not say major content release, just content release. And that is down to the serious lack of content contained in season one. One map, one specialist, two weapons, one being a crossbow, two helicopters, which are basically reskinned copies of each other, the smoke grenade launcher, and a 100 tier battle pass pales in comparison to previous Battlefield release schedules. Now, nearly nine months after going live, BF3, you know, my personal favorite of the entire franchise, had already pushed live back to Karkin just two months after going to market, the Close Quarters DLC, and Armored Kill was on the near horizon. Now, in terms of the new content in Season 1, I tried it out for about 10 minutes, and then I just turned off the game and went about my daily routines. Exposure, the one new map in Season 1, is decent, I guess, question mark? It tries really hard to push against our disdain for the typical boring flat maps that are still the bulk of the 2042 map rotation. Now what really pushes me away from the game, and I just came to this realization as I was laying down this commentary, that besides all the technical flaws, are all these overwatchy characters and all their gadget spam. It's now more about grappling hooks and wingsuits than visceral FPS rooted in reality combat. The immersion is completely broken when you're trying to lock down one of the tunnels on exposure and someone just comes ripping through using a wingsuit. Battlefield has always had those only in Battlefield moments like Renda Zooks and a whole lot more, but you know, 2042 feels like it's trying to win a corporate sponsorship from Red Bull and all of their X games. Maybe that's why I prefer to hit up portal mode more than anything when I feel like hitting my head against the wall, aka playing Battlefield 2042. I logged on earlier this morning after downloading the latest update and took a look at the new completely redesigned Kaleidoscope map and yeah, I found it extremely underwhelming. Not that I expected much more, but it always hits a little harder when you finally get to experience the real thing. 2042 needs more than cargo crates and sandbags sprinkled around its maps to make them playable. And one thing I wanted to point out, some of the largest changes they made to the map are not really used in Conquest. During my session, I explored around the map and it looks to me that players who will play Rush and Breakthrough will see much more use of these restructured areas than someone like me that prefers Conquest. There's some AA fire shooting up into the air, the colorings feel a little less oversaturated color palette, and there are some rolling elevation changes instead of the plain flat areas they used to be, but overall Kaleidoscope or any of the other maps besides Exposure will require major overhauls, with some of them just being completely scrapped to get to a point that these maps would ever be considered decent with strong combat flow. 
There's also some quality of life improvements in this latest update, uh, specialist tone reworks so they look a little more battle hardened and some of their voice lines have been modified to be less cringy, although there's still plenty of cringe in there. I think it's just cringe baked into the whole specialist implementation, but yeah. Both stealth helis have been nerfed. The BSVM was apparently nerfed, but still wrecks. And aim assist was also adjusted for controllers. And by the way, speaking of aim assist and just aim in general, I can't remember playing an FPS with such horrible mouse input. DICE knows how to do this right because I can go back and play three, four, one, and even to some extent five, and all those previous Battlefield releases had mouse input that was accurate and felt good. But when I play 2042, not only am I taking on bots, other players, vehicles, weather effects, and tons of server lag, but then I'm in a constant battle just to get my damn mouse to cooperate and allow my crosshairs to center on another player. How an FPS title that centers on combat cannot seem to get mouse input fully corrected is beyond my scope of belief. I've read the previous patch notes, I've seen the post, hell there's even videos on YouTube showing you how to basically fix the terrible mouse input by reconfiguring all sorts of lines of code, but I don't know about you, but I'm not down for diving into game files to fix something like mouse input. PC gaming 20 years ago, okay, I can see it happening, but not on a modern AAA FPS title, especially a Battlefield game that has the previous knowledge on how to make mouse input work correctly. Alright, since I've been taking a hiatus from posting Battlefield content to my channel, I've actually freed up just a bit of free time in my daily schedule to watch other content creators, and this has not only been informative, but really entertaining. I recently watched a clip of Shroud installing Battlefield 2042 onto his gaming PC, at which point the game completely jumped to his non-primary monitor, which has happened to me many times. Hearing Shroud's reaction as 2042 decided to reconfigure all of his desktop apps was priceless. And by the way, if Shroud ever happens to see this video, bro, I feel your pain. And also what's stirring up a bit of buzz within the community was one of Jack Frag's latest videos, especially this title, Battlefield 2042 starting to get good now. And what I found interesting is that a viewer of mine sent me a link to Enders, another content creator's response video to Jack's video title, and several of the comments Jack makes during his commentary. Now, the issue was focused in on the state of the base game, and Enders really waded into this one. And I've gone back and listened to every word he said, and you know what? I don't have a single issue with any of his statements. It's sharp, it bites, but Enders is spot on. There are still so many base, deeply rooted core issues with 2042 that it will take a completely new game to erase and correct them. I started to go back and watch both of their catalogs of previous gameplay vids, and I've got to say they're both accomplished players. Jack seems to take the high road on most topics, steering clear of going all in on issues within the game, whereas Enders is at the complete and opposite end of that spectrum. Now one concept that really resonated with me was this idea that it was irresponsible to post a video or content based around how 2042 is getting better, because it really isn't. In a broad concept, there is an argument that it is getting better, but only when you compare it back to the state it originally launched in. And in that context, I guess, yeah, it is better, but that's not saying much. As Enders points out in his video, and by the way, I will link both Jack and Enders' videos in my video description. Anyways, as Enders says, the game is still plagued by an overwhelming amount of balance and design issues. And short of DICE just completely pulling down 2042, starting over, and then releasing a completely new version of 2042, this current game has zero hope of developing into a Battlefield title that can compete with those Golden Age releases. A fact that I think is widely accepted within DICE, just my thoughts here, I have no proof, but even if you look at the announcement that we just received for Season 2, expected next month, you can see that even the studio is done with this one and just ready to move on. Another season, one new map, etc, etc. 
I personally don't post content to YouTube as my full-time job, but it must be truly disheartening for anyone that does specialize in content creation for the Battlefield franchise. Anyways, as always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. Anything Battlefield related is fair game. Please take a moment to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive all my future upload alerts. Remember, you can find and follow me on Twitch for weekly streams, over on Twitter, and of course, you can join my community Discord server. Links to all my socials in the video description below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.